narrative. This is my mother's family in Guangzhou. Um, my grandparents are the ones um, seated um, on the other side of um, their daughter, their youngest daughter. My mother is the one, she's the tallest one in the middle in the back. And um, my grandfather um, came from Macau. He was part of um, this group of landlords that had um, been uh, governing Macau for several generations. And when the communist revolution occurred, the whole family disbanded. Some ended up in Hong Kong, um, but uh, my father, grandfather ended up in Guangzhou. And it was there that he met my grandmother, who was a factory worker. And, you know, she came from very humble means. And because of the communist revolution they met, they wouldn't have otherwise met um, in the previous um, organization in China. And, and so when I think about this narrative, I think about how history has really moved things in such significant ways. Um, my grandfather also believed that men were boys, a son was more valuable than a daughter. He very, very deeply believed this um, to the extent that he pushed my grandmother to continue having children until um, she bore a son. Um, she never did. She had five daughters. Um, I get very emotional thinking about that. <laughs> Um, I didn't really understand this growing up in Oakland. I grew up um, in a single parent household. My um, father was not well, and so my mother raised my brother and I, and, and we were very low income. We were on welfare. And in many ways, I felt like I grew up in this diaspora, um, this Asian diaspora. Um, and when I think about this story and I think about you know, where I am now, it's almost unbelievable. <laughs> um, uh, when I was selecting colleges, um, I had no direction. Um, I barely had access to dial up internet. And I joke with my husband, who's one of the co-founders of Google, that thanks to him, I actually got an education. Um, and I was able to understand the path forward, because um, I, I didn't, know much. My mother wasn't able to tell me how to navigate this. She didn't actually come to the United States until um, uh, she was nearly 30, and I was born two years later. She had never been outside of China prior. So, you know, UPS, thank you for having me. Thank you for taking me. I, I haven't been back on campus since I graduated. Um, I actually hadn't even visited the campus prior to my move-in date because we didn't have funds to visit colleges. Um, UPS offered me an enormous merit scholarship. Thank you so much. Um, and so I'm happy to be part of this community. And um, you guys are part of this community. And it's a really special one. It's incredibly authentic. Um, I have visited so many college campuses. I've worked with some of the top corporations and some of the top people in Silicon Valley. And there's something um, different about this community than any other one I've ever been in. It's authentic. It's relationship-based. Um, people want to do good, uh, and people want to learn for the sake of learning. And it was here that I got to explore so many different areas of education. Um, Asian studies opens you up to such a big part of the world, but then you can structure it with economics, which I did. Um, and science as well, which I wasn't actually very good at here, but you still let me take those classes. <laughs> um, so I think, you know, this narrative, uh, going back to it, um, the next slide, please. My grandfather came around eventually, and he actually raised my mother um, as his son because he needed somebody to bring up. Um, and my mother made it to the United States under Deng Xiaoping's kind of open door policy. She was an accountant. And so she ended up in the Bay Area um, at in school, learning how uh, to balance books. <laughs> um, I 
I was always confused by my mother. She never told me about her life. I am still learning about it, the pain, the struggle, um, the abuse. And, you know, her legacy is one that I think is going to be about that immigrant, swallow it, swallow the pain, <laughs> um, and do your best with what you have. And that white knuckle approach to life is extremely hard, um, but it's also extremely effective. And I don't think it's the way that we carry on in the next generation. I think it's time to heal. Um, it's time to identify, um, and it's time to be that deep version of you. Um, claim it, claim your story, claim your legacy, claim your parents' legacy. So this is uh, my grandfather a few months before he passed away. Um, he ended up moving to the Bay Area. My mother moved him. Um, and he was so proud. Um, he didn't really understand you, you know, why I decided to go to law school, but he liked the idea a lot. <laughs> um, and so I visited him after my graduation from law school, and it, it, I, I, we didn't really exchange that much. I, there's something about the Chinese culture where you know, there's pride and there's smiles and there's clapping, but the words sometimes aren't there. <laughs> And, and, but what I would imagine he was feeling and thinking was, I, and I'm hoping, I'm wondering, if, if, if he really changed his opinion on, on daughters and girls and leadership. Um, I have to believe he did. <laughs> um, so as I carry on today and, you know, think about this community, um, how I want to give back to it, is I want to support these narratives. I want the world to see them. Um, I want there to be pride. I don't want there to be loneliness in this diaspora anymore. Um, and the steps to getting there are using the arts, um, using the justice system. Um, using um, you know, really an authentic approach to building businesses and building out leadership teams. Um, Silicon Valley is incredibly diverse, um, but again, encouraging each other to speak up, um, learning what it's like to speak up, um, and feeling that confidence and pride in one's own identity.